<laughs> hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and with me are two good friends of mine, also streamers. To the right is the view, to the left is Tech the Skulls. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Excited. So yeah, we're here at, in Manchester now. Uh, we're in uh, Texas's uh, rental apartment, and we wanted to sit down and chat a little bit, but a little bit about what's going on with Star Citizen. And now we're gonna do a little bit of speculation on the final presentation keynote, which is the part of the CitizenCon presentation where they reveal the biggest, best stuff coming to Star Citizen in the next year or even beyond. Mm -hmm. So we've yeah. we've had quite a bit of beyond stuff in some of the. Uh, presentations so i put out a video on my youtube channel if you haven't checked it out you can check it out down in the description below about speculation based on leaks from um was i think with data mining that some people posted on reddit from stuff that they added into a most recent patch now that included yeah. pyro which if you guys don't know is one of the systems connecting us uh from stanton to the squadron 42 systems which is odin and what's the other one you guys remember it's well, no, I don't. There are two systems yeah. in Squadron 42. There's Odin and, and one other system. But anyway, it's not important yeah, what they're called, but there's a, there's like one or two systems in between that, right? So we know that they've got that pretty much done for Squadron mm -hmm. 42. They're just polishing it and then really working on getting all of the uh, scripted events to happen, sure. right, in the coding, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but how like if they're going to have that done, then that seems like content they'd want to release into the verse at some point, right? So we got to yeah. get connected to that. So this, yep. that's why this leak has a bit of weight to it because it would make sense to release the system that connects us to Squadron 42, pre-Squadron 42 release, because it helps us start to now test things like using jump points sure. and having two different servers connected to each other, right? Is it like a very preliminary server meshing sort of thing. Sure. It's just one server to another. Do the the like handoff. Well, right, right. I don't, if that's what it's going to be like. It's yeah. pure right. speculation. True, uh, absolutely. I don't know if there uh, needs to be server meshing between systems. I believe that... Uh, one map or one level is one system. So when you transfer between systems, it's really kind of like mm -hmm. loading a new... Yeah. I, I don't know. No, I, the back I, no, I think you're yeah. right because I was having a conversation yeah. with uh, Kelvin. Again, thank you, by the way, for coming. Uh, we appreciate that you, that you came out and hanged out with us. Yeah. Uh, but he was talking about how you know you could look at the folders of the different systems and each system is an old folder. And that would, uh, that would I guess, s speak to it being uh, an object container within its own. So I believe that, yeah. is, that is definitely yeah. like a level, as you've set that will load yeah. off of your RAM and and, yeah. and be replaced by the next system. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. now let's move into speculation. Okay. That's kind of what the video was about. What are you guys thinking that is going to be I, in this keynote? I, I mean, I've heard the, the whole idea of another system is, I feel like, universally speculated. But before we, before we okay. go into speculation, let's just start by saying this... This is speculation. We don't want to, we, we have to consciously like try to reel ourselves back and have to set our expectations sure. too high. Yeah. Um, but that being said, it is fun, so let's just get straight yeah. into it. So, I mean, I expect that like basically they're going to announce the game's done. Yeah. Uh, all 100 systems will be announced today. And I, I, I'm, I'm with this guy. Yeah. He's, he sounds like he knows what talking well, about. Well, no, no, no. I, 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 well, I called Chris yesterday. Oh, okay. Well, oh. last night at about 3 a.m., okay. you know, oh. I couldn't sleep and I, and I called Chris and I was like, hey, man, can't sleep. He's like, me too. You know, he's got a big presentation coming yeah. up. Mm -hmm. um, and he told me that actually they're only uh, ever making three systems. So, oh. yeah. So uh, the Star Citizen 100 reason, System yeah. Dream is killed. Uh, three systems max. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. No. Scam Citizen. Oh, yeah. uh, Scam uh, Citizen. Pull, the money. Pulling it back, though, <laughs> another system. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've just heard it repeated so many times over the last few months that that's the thing that they're announcing that I kind of have taken it for granted now. I feel like that is what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, whether it's Pyro or some other system, I don't know yet. I don't even know what's in Pyro as far as like planets or anything like that. That is uh, so outside of my wheelhouse. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it's, it's tough to keep up with all that. Things that are probably obviously going to be in it is the Carrick is going to be used as some ship in the demo because I think it's expected to come out very soon anyways. Yep. Uh, we know that we're going to get a couple new ships. We don't know what. Anvil Capital ship is like high up on the list of probabilities. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, something like a Pyro System showing jump point technology or whatever it is, that kind of gameplay, I think we're going to see something like that potentially. Um, and yeah. maybe Titan Suits, maybe... Uh, Something around there. I, I really feel like our hope that they're going to surprise us with something like, oh, here's Reclamation gameplay or here's something. Because yeah. there's a lot of stuff like refueling or something where they keep moving it down like the or the roadmap. It keeps getting pushed out. And mm -hmm. yeah. And then so, so part of me thinks, okay, yeah, it's probably just got pushed out. But part of me is like hoping that, well, maybe, maybe one of those things they're just going to like sneak it in. Surprise! You can now be a doctor or something, but I, I don't expect that. Because well, remember, though, that what they've consistently said as of late is that yeah. they always have one feature, one big feature, that they specifically leave off of the roadmap to present at CitizenCon. 
Mm-hmm. So they, they've been saying that. I, I don't remember where I saw yeah. it, but it, it, I believe it was official. Yeah. And they said that there's something that we're working on that's not on the roadmap on purpose. But, so but it's I think, to reveal. I think it's more than just for sitcom, though. I think they were yeah. saying that they do it for pretty much every release is that they, they add a little bit of something in. Yeah, okay. because we got uh, the last release. What was the what was the thing that we just got? It was... Um, Oh, prison! Well, they just dropped prison on us. And the, and, right? the, and the mantis was like a surprise. The mantis right? was a surprise, right? Oh, so so interdiction gameplay. So yeah, I think the idea was, and, I forget, and again, I apologize. I wish I had like a roster of all yeah. the all the CIG um, head developers, but I don't. I really should put one together. But <laughs> I remember one of the uh, one of the lead um, devs was talking about how like they're doing this to try to keep excitement up for every every release. In mm-hmm. fact, yep. I think it might have been Sean Tracy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, sure. Uh, so yeah, I like it. So I, think, I, I I do too. Yeah, no, I like. I, I think it. it's a great way to to kind of keep people excited for the next release mm-hmm. more than just for what's on the roadmap. Because I mean, you, you, you see what's on there and you kind of get used to it after three yeah. months, and it's nice to suddenly say, "Oh, we're getting this other cool thing." Because yeah. the other part of it is, every time without 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 fail in those three months, something gets moved off of the next patch, yeah. which yeah. disappoints somebody inevitably. Yeah. And like I, I'm a little disappointed we're, we're not getting everything that was uh, originally on the roadmap for, for yeah. the next patch, but yeah. at least we're getting these surprises for, for Sitcon, and that's what's keeping me really, really excited. Absolutely. I'm also a big fan of all the direct flyable stuff. It makes yeah. it way yes. more exciting when they reveal new ships. You no, know, yeah. th- that's actually something I want to ask John Kerr about, because uh, they did the Arrow for last year. You yeah. guys remember Jay that? Lee that designed was, that. That I was believe. straight to flyable, which is an incredible ship, and even yeah. today it's, it's one of the best little fighters you can get. But since then... We've had a few ships that have been presented that weren't straight to flyable, which is kind of weird. Like the um, yeah. like the little uh, bike thing. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Ranger. Ranger. Yeah. yeah, which yeah, is really Ranger. cool, but that was kind of weird. It's like such yeah. a small ship, why isn't that direct to flyable? I'm not uh, sure. I don't know. There, there may be a tech thing where they, it, I don't know, maybe they haven't designed the technology for a wheel, yeah. two-wheeled vehicles. I don't know. But I, I think that their intent is to move more and more towards everything being direct to flyable, but they didn't say they were going to just do that overnight. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. A, it's a process to get there. They want more and more ships to be direct to flyable, but it's not going to, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, right? Not all of them are going to be that way. Yeah. Um, I, well, I think the, eventually we'll get there. The, the the ballista was also direct to playable. Yeah, it was. Not oh, yeah, that was. Drivable. Yeah, I forgot about the ballista. <laughs> drivable, yeah, well, was direct drivable. And, and I actually, I bought one right when it came off. I can't yeah. believe I yeah. that. Uh, yeah, that, that's a really cool vehicle. But here, here's the thing. So I think direct flyable ships are really cool. Mm-hmm. But um, and, and you can disagree with me on this one. I think it's really important that they start looking at getting systems out, and that's because we're getting kind of really close to their their release of Squadron Forty Two. Yeah. Uh, but we're also uh, quite a few years in now into development. It's no secret Star Citizen yeah. has taken a while to develop. And I and I understand. I'm actually really patient about this. I've worked on big projects in architecture, and I understand it takes time to develop this yeah. stuff. But considering how many systems um, that are, are are expected uh, for a, a release, and I say in quotes release because I think it's going to be more of like something that's strung out over many years. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we should yeah. at this point, I think, in at least in my mind, in this part you can disagree with, have at least one other system. Well, you know, at least to, just to to start getting that that those mechanics of trading the like yeah. moving from system to system, the the coding that yep. has to do with it. I, I think it so. would I think it would be nice. I think that like we live in a sparse universe right now with only fifty people per server, so you yeah. barely run into a lot of people right now. Um, having another system I think would have some advantages. But I also don't want them to get to this like you know, a million bowls of oatmeal kind of a problem where it's like, right. oh, we have all these different systems, but they're all the same as Stanton. Well, kinda like sure. I, I hate to I hate to you know throw shade here, but kinda like League like Dangerous, you know. Right. So, I, I haven't actually played yeah. the game, but yeah. It, it's a lot of the same. Yeah. <laughs> over same. and over and yeah. over again. I mean, or, you know, there's a couple different suns. and Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. or No Man's Sky, actually. And, and here, yeah. like, I think No Man's Sky really kind of killed the, um, what, is it, what is it called? The automatic generation. There's a name for automatic generation. Procedural. Procedural, Procedural. Yeah. Procedural yeah. generation of planets. Because it sounds great on paper, like it's automatically generating these papers, uh, these these planets and, and fauna through these different yeah. variables. But somehow our brains are so good at recognizing patterns that you start to see similarities with yeah. every planet you visit. And once you've visited one, you kind of know what the other ones are going to look like. Sure. There'll be variations in the color and the yeah. s- size of the plants, but you kind of sure. know. So yeah. Star Citizen, I think, um, I think they're very aware of this, and they're trying to um, find a balance between the, the handcrafted part mm-hmm. of yeah. creating planets and the automatic generation. That, that's okay. literally the word that was on my tongue is balance. Yeah. Between balance, the two. right, yeah. You, you need yeah. that. Well, so. what I love is every planet and star system in mm-hmm. Star Citizen is lore-based. It's like they come mm-hmm. up with what they want the planet yeah. to be, what they want the star system to be, and then they try to find procedural stuff to help make it 
and then artistically yeah. like tweak it, right? It's not like we're just going to like throw it out there and the, all the star systems are going to be randomly generated. Mm-hmm. So I, that yep. gives it a lot more depth, I think, than you would otherwise. It get. does, it does, because it's it's really even the procedural processes as we've seen before. It's artist driven, yeah, right. Yeah, it may not be handcrafted, but yeah. it's it's artist driven, and they're kind of setting those parameters and saying it needs this look and feel, right? It needs to have yeah. these characteristics. Which, again, fits right into lore. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one other thing that I kind of think may drop this year at Citizen Con, which I don't think anybody's really been talking about, is Phase 1 or Phase 0 Persistence. I think mm-hmm. they're really close well, to some sort of... Like, yeah. And not, the idea of wiping your account every three months, I think that's going away sooner yeah. than people Th- that's realize. That's the big one. Actually, I did mention that video, and I forgot okay. to mention it at the beginning, is uh, because they talked about it, CIG, somebody did note, one of my viewers noted that when, when CIG mentions something mm-hmm. about something possibly in the future, they only ever mention it if they're fairly certain they're going to be able to get it into a very um, a very near upcoming patch. Mm-hmm. So, and, But yeah. usually if they don't say when it's going to be, mm-hmm. that means that they're unsure if they're able to get that done. Yeah, so sure. I think that persistence might be like the uh, the windfall of this particular yeah. citizen con for a lot of people because there are, there are so many comments and again I, and it's great to refer to my comment section because it, it is really informative about the feeling of the community. I get a lot of comments about I'm not playing Star Citizen because the game the the server refreshes every every three months mm-hmm. or less. and it hurts really it hurts. It, it yeah does. it does hurt. so. it hurts that playability over time it kills mm-hmm. the community right before a new patch drops yep. um, and if they could eliminate that. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, it would agreed. it only serve to help continually grow the community and not yeah. have this this curve of up and down every, every yeah. patch because it really yeah. does hurt growth. And yeah. Star Citizen recently, and from my perspective, has been suffering with growth. So yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. And you know how they show that off, right? Well, naturally, the the keynote is going to crash, right? And when <laughs> they come back in, they're in the exact same spot. Not not crash recovery. That would be Persistence. a really that would be a clever way to do it. <laughs> that would be very clever. Right? That would be very clever. Right? So, I mean, that's, well, you know, going back to something that you just said as well um, about how, you know, they usually don't mention something unless it's kind of close. Mm-hmm. They actually formally said that about CitizenCon, what, two years back, right? Yeah. They said that they want to move CitizenCon from this, oh, let's, you know, look two years down the line into, you know, what is coming in the next one to two patches. Yeah. And so whatever we see at CitizenCon is most likely going to be in 3.8 3. or 3.9, yeah. right, coming but I, up. But I think it future. also has to do with pace, right? Because mm-hmm. the pace is now picking up as they've gotten most of, the, most of the pillars done. Yeah. We've only got two major pillars left, which is server-side OCS and server meshing. Yep. Um, and, and the tools are nearly uh, in, in a state where they, they're happy to start creating more and, yeah. more, and yeah. more and more content. Yeah, so. they're, they're getting more and more into art-driven game, like development, than like technology having to like right. build something which, from the ground up which yeah. let's be honest has really hurt the vi- like the, the the image of star citizen because a lot of that tech isn't visibly uh, apparent with mm-hmm. with yeah. the patches right cuz yeah. you don't see the ocs but, tools yeah. but right. you do see your fps count go up and you don't understand well there was a lot of time investment into getting that exactly. work, right yeah. yeah so so well cuz i mean your your average consumer video game consumer just simply you know sees the release game and they say oh cool i get 60 fps but they don't yeah. understand all of the work that had to go into getting you that stable 60 yep. right yep so and with star citizen we we very real see it awesome so like to close, what do we think, um, just right away, what, what is the biggest thing that you, you would love to see in, like, the thing of Citizen Con in that final keynote? Is it a new system? Is it is it persistence? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we all hope that all of it comes out. But is, if there's one thing that you could have of, of the pool of speculation, what is that one thing you would love to see? Persistence, period. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how persistence is come, comes to be. I mean, persistence would be huge, I think, for the community. So, yeah, I'd love to see that. I'd also secretly like to see, like, rock climbing or, like, <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but outside of that, yeah, yeah, persistence <laughs> would be amazing. It just, it's so hurtful when, and hurtful is a terrible word, it just, it sucks, right, when you, A, lose everything you worked for every three months, mm-hmm. but also, you know, that's the big picture persistence, but the small minutia persistence is, you know, when I crash and I have this full cargo load and I'm, you know, landed on a, a moon or something and then I log back in and I've lost everything, right? Yeah. If we can really start to persist that where if I got to, you know, go log out for an hour and I can come back right where I was. Yeah. Not log out of my bed and ship, but, you know, literally I was on foot on a planet and I can, you know, come back in and yeah. I have my exact inventory. It just, 
it it, it allows ship, the game. Even if your ship doesn't fully log out, even yes. if you have to park it somewhere and hope somebody doesn't find it. Yeah, that yeah. would still be nice to just be able to like. I mean, you can kind of do that where you can log out in bed, but I don't think that's consistent and. It is, it's, it's a lot more consistent or, now, finally, Yeah. because um, they said that they fixed a bug recently that took okay. it from working like 20% of the time, sure. or 50 to like 85 Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Persistence just makes the game much more playable yep. to me. Absolutely. Uh, I agree. And um, actually, I just logged on uh, the other day. I was streaming on Wednesday. I logged back on for my Saturday stream. Mm-hmm. I logged off on Hurston in my Cutlass, and I was okay. still there. Nice. Four days later, which is That's amazing. Which means um, that they either figured out how to get persistence from server to ser- uh, server mm-hmm. crash to server crash, which would be really good news, or somehow they were able to get the server so stable that it didn't crash for that time. In either case, yeah. it's really good news for Star Citizen. It does seem like yeah. they're they're definitely yeah. honing in on that um, on a better code. Yes. But uh, as far as what I'm looking forward to, I'm with you guys. I think persistence is the biggest thing. It'd be really nice to have a, a new system, and I, I really hope that we we get Pyro or something like that. Yeah, but I think in in terms of, of growing the community, what would be best would be to have persistence. Yeah, yeah, indeed. and it'd also be great for for just as content creators to continually make content on it to know that your your work that you yes. put in every day yeah. is going to to add up, and you you continually be able to grow uh, your accounts. So yeah, and I think that's super important in a sandbox game. Yeah, because I mean, a sandbox game, you know, you're not walking along this theme park ride where there's an end goal. You're setting those goals, and a yeah. lot of times those goals are the growth of your character, or the growth of, you know, your assets, right? You're you're working towards just building yourself up, right? And without persistence, it's like okay, yeah, yeah, yeah it's just this Groundhog's Day. Of, <laughs> yeah, you got to really, really want it. Yeah. You do, yeah, you uh, you do. So, so and, and unfortunately, a lot of the wider community isn't going to be as maybe as quite enthusiastic or dedicated. Mm-hmm. Um, especially maybe they would once they knew more about the project. I think most people once they learn about Star Citizen, the intricacies, like really yeah. get into it. Mm-hmm. But for uh, for for the majority, the vast majority who are just glancing at Star Citizen, they hear about this. It's really a turnoff. Yep. And it is is a big problem again Agreed. for growth. So, yep. so yeah, I think uh, I think that sounds awesome. I hope all of these things come true. Some, <laughs> some, even some of them, I'd be happy. Even if it's only twenty five percent of things we talked about come true, yep. I think yeah. it'll still be a good sitcom. I'm convinced that the keynote presentation is going to be just as good as it was last year, uh, which was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm really looking forward to it. So thank you both for sitting down, and having this conversation, and taking some time out of the Absolutely. day. Yeah. We're actually going to head off uh, now and, and go try to meet up with board gamer and a bunch of other content creators who are just getting in town now mm-hmm. uh, and, and I'll probably bring my camera along and record some of that event so maybe you guys will see that uh, uploaded a little bit later but anyway guys thank you so much for joining us uh, thank, thank you for having me yeah thanks appreciate it and, uh, and if you guys haven't already make sure you head down to the description and check out both of these guys and hit the like and subscribe button on, on their videos alright and uh, yeah so we'll see you guys next time thanks for joining us